Deputy Thank President. you, Senator Lyons. Uh, Senator O'Sullivan. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Acting uh, Deputy President. Uh, I rise tonight to continue uh, a discussion that I started in this place last week regarding a vulnerable group of Australians who suffer from the medical condition of atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome. Uh, Mr uh, Acting Deputy President, uh, this condition is a very aggressive medical condition uh, that promotes organ failure uh, in patients who are exposed, in particular renal failure followed by liver failure and uh, in many cases uh, the patients will go on to suffer brain damage. Uh, the uh, condition uh, is a very aggressive condition and one that is uh, often measured in a patient's life in weeks rather than months uh, and certainly not years. Uh, for many, this condition is ultimately uh, life-threatening and for some, fatal. For those who do not surrender their life to this condition, uh, they often confront a lifetime of um, uh, living with uh, the results of the organ failures, um, many of them not eligible for corresponding uh, life transplant uh, arrangements because of the presence of the condition. I said last time, and I will continue to repeat myself each time I stand to my feet that I stand here to speak for those who don't have a voice for themselves, for the grandparents and the parents and the brothers and sisters, the uncles and aunties and the patients themselves who have been engaging with, uh, with myself as a senator and I know many colleagues in this place uh, as well as uh, members of the House of Representatives. Mr. Uh, uh, Acting Deputy President, there uh, are estimated to be about 70 Australians who suffer from the condition, with approximately 22 of them uh, in acute stages uh, of this disease as I rise to speak tonight. So not only uh, are their voices silent, but there are very few of them uh, to gain momentum to have those silent voices heard. And so without uh, people like myself and others in this place and across in the House of Representatives putting forward their case, uh, then uh, their uh, life's conditions uh, will remain in the balance. There is a solution, uh, Mr uh, Acting Deputy President, and that is uh, to do with a drug called Solaris, uh, which is uh, a, a very expensive drug, one that costs about a half a million dollars a year per patient. Uh, the trials uh, are yet to determine whether these patients have to remain uh, on the drug for life or whether the exposure to the drug over set periods of time and uh, various uh, time iterations have been presented, but up to 12 months, uh, which may tide them through, protect their organs, protect their lives, uh, whilst the condition uh, goes into some form of remission. Uh, the drug uh, has been the subject of an application before our former government. Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, rejected on the basis of some clinical trials, but again uh, the subject of an application lodged late 2013, considered by the PBAC uh, in, uh, sometime in March 2014. The PBAC have effectively in principle approved the drug uh, for use. Uh, the PBAC uh, have uh, agreed, as I understand it, um, broadly uh, to the cost impost to the drug, uh, but uh, there are some delays as we speak uh, due to negotiations that are occurring between uh, the government or the health department uh, and the company about the terms and conditions 
of the managed entry scheme that will apply uh, for access to the drug for patients in Australia. Uh, as is the case with uh, modern drugs, um, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President, um, uh, these boutique drugs, uh, particularly for rare disorders, uh, there are not uh, very broad trials that can be conducted, uh, and there's a, a, a little bit of trial and error involved in the implementation of it. This drug in particular has only been used uh, for treatment of this condition for three and a quarter years internationally, and so there is much more to be learnt, both about the uh, performance potential of the drug and any long-term impact, uh, negative impact it might have uh, on patients who are exposed over the longer period. But the difficulty is, uh, Mr uh, Acting Deputy President, uh, is that uh, whilst the Department of Health have agreed uh, in many instances with uh, the terms and conditions of the negotiations with the pharmaceutical manufacturer from the United States, um, there is disagreement um, uh, with respect to the government's resolve to ensure uh, that this drug is accepted on terms that meet the national interests and also meet uh, the requirements of the patients. Uh, I think personally some of the conditions that the Department of Health is uh, is negotiating are uh, very fair and very reasonable in the circumstances. Uh, they're asking the company to uh, enter into arrangements where if the drug proves to be unsuccessful with particular patients, and I understand uh, patients react differently to the performance of this medicine, uh, then uh, the state, uh, uh, Australia, reserves the right to withdraw from the arrangements. I think that's perfectly reasonable. Uh, I'm satisfied, Mr Acting uh, Deputy President, that great progress has been made in these discussions. Uh, I think they're at a very advanced stage, but the difficulty now rests in convincing the pharmaceutical company to give access to some of these patients. And there are 11 Australians who are in critical, immediate need of this drug uh, to maintain their health. Um, if, uh, and I anticipate it might, if negotiations with the PBS are to go on and are measured in months, uh, then uh, indeed we will have young Australians, beautiful young Australians like Bianca Scott off the Gold Coast in my home state of Queensland, uh, who will suffer from organ failure, uh, organ failure from which she might not return, and in fact it may well, and I hope I don't bring Bianca or her family any distress in saying this, uh, it might put her life at risk. In fact, it will put her life at risk. Um, that family has spent $235,000 with this company to buy the drug at a personal level to this date. They have run out of a capacity to be able to do that. Uh, I stand here tonight, as I did the other day, and I call upon this pharmaceutical company this company that is engaging with our country, who are giving favourable consideration to uh, entering into arrangements with them uh, for tens upon tens upon tens of millions of dollars of Australia's taxpayers' money uh, to subsidise and fund this important drug, a company that has a turnover of $1.5 billion, a company where the CEO has an annual salary of $14 million and uh, $168 million in share options, I call on them tonight uh, to give consideration to extending uh, access to this drug to these 11 Australians who are in critical need of it at the moment until such time as we have properly and sensibly worked through the issues uh, uh, associated with the terms and conditions about access to this drug. Mr Acting Deputy President, uh, I say to the CEO of Alexion tonight, who is, uh, as we speak, uh, I suspect uh, laying warm and fair in his bed in the United States, tomorrow morning to ask himself a question, to close his eyes and give consideration as to what he would want his company to do in these circumstances if this were his daughter. 
uh, who faced uh, this terrible plight in life. And uh, I am prepared, if he does that in a fair manner, Mr. Acting Deputy President, to live with Thank the you, decision Senator that he takes. Uh,